Hi, I'm Lucy from Sew Essential and I'm here today with a roundup of the patterns and fabrics you can use to recreate similar looks from episode 3 of series 10 of The Great British Sewing Bee. Everything I talk about is available on our site, you'll find links to all the products I mentioned below and also a link to our weekly newsletter for a weekly dose of sewing inspiration straight to your inbox. So this week it was travel week and whereas in the past we've been some really exotic far-flung places um, and had some really sort of unusual um, outfits to sew, this week it was a bit closer to home, it was the French Riviera and um, also sewing a top from a tablecloth. Um, so yeah it was great to see the different designs that people came up with for the French Riviera theme really wide open theme um, and I was expecting to see lots of dresses but actually there were lots and lots of separates so we'll get stuck into that in a minute but let's just start with the pattern challenge first so for the pattern challenge the sewing bees had to sew a blouse from um, vintage tablecloths there were some beautiful vintage tablecloths and it wasn't just about the sewing it was about the pattern placement as well of the embroidered design on the tablecloth so really lovely to see people's creativity come out we've got some patterns that are very similar to what they use so the first one is Liesl & Co the Positano blouse and dress pattern which has just recently come out and looks very similar to what the sewing bees made it's got a little V cut out at the front it's got a yoke with a gathered um, bodice underneath the yoke it's got a raglan sleeve a full sleeve that's finished into an elastic casing and a loose fitting bodice and then there's a dress included in this pattern as well and I think it just looks very very similar to what the sewing bees made. The other pattern that's very similar is Simplicity 9928 which is actually a loungewear set but it's got two different tops both with a tie fastening at the front one of them with a very low V and the other one looks like it's joined at the top um, but it's got the yoke as well and then that gathered like loose fitting bodice underneath it's got a full sleeve into a deep cuff um, and then you also get trousers and shorts included in that pattern as well but I thought that the blouse was very similar to what the sewing bees made. Along a similar theme I've got the Style at Arc Kent woven tunic. Um, it's got a grandad collar on this one that goes into a V at the front. Um, it hasn't got a yoke across the front, it has got a yoke across the back but it's got the billowy full sleeves that finish in a cuff so I thought again a similar theme to what the sewing bees made in the pattern challenge. And then also I wanted to include a pattern that I made recently that I absolutely loved. It was such a simple quick serve and it's a really lovely blouse to make and wear and it's the True Bias Roscoe blouse and dress um, and it's got very sort of bohemian vibes like the other blouse patterns it's a V at the front it's finished with a bias binding which the sewing bees had to do in their challenge I'm going to pop links to all my bias binding tutorials below for you I've got lots of those lots of tips and advice on that um, it was gathered underneath the bias binding it's got very full sleeves Leaves, um, a loose fit it's just a very pretty sort of bohemian themed blouse so that was my other choice for that one so any of those would be a great blouse to make for summer from vintage tablecloths or you could choose I've brought this viscose cotton embroidered fabric uh, eyelet fabric out many times before because it's just absolutely beautiful it's got beautiful drape and movement it's a gorgeous lilac hue and it's got these little embroidered cutouts on it and we also do this in a coral color way as well um so yeah that's my choice for those patterns I think that would work for any of those really well and then on to the made to measure challenge where the bees had to choose an outfit for their model um, inspired by the French Riviera so there's a really wide range of choices the first one I want to talk about is Alex she made a jumpsuit with a very fitted um, short bodice piece it had tie straps thin tie straps and then very wide legs and I thought simplicity 9597 would enable you to create something similar um, it's got the very fitted bodice piece it hasn't got tie straps but it's got thin straps it's got very wide legs the wide legs are actually tiered they've got gathered tiers on them um, you could admit that if you wanted to but actually I like the design the way it is it is a maxi dress as well and then at the back it's got a gorgeous cut out feature I really love this the moment it came out and I've been planning to get around to making this one for a long time still haven't 
haven't done it. Um, but yeah, I thought that could create something along a similar theme. And I chose this gorgeous cotton fabric um, with this beautiful floral print on. I thought that was very summery, very French, French Riviera-y <laughs> and would work really well for that jumpsuit. Next up is um, Georgie. So Georgie decided to make a super slinky silky bias cut skirt. Gave herself a bit of a challenge with that. I think she even did French seams. Um, I'll pop, try and remember to pop a link to our French seams tutorial below, but if not, just you'll find it on the channel. We've got so many tutorials on the channel. Um, and then she made a loose fitting sort of boxy sleeveless crew neck top to go with it. Um, I thought that the McCall 7931 would do the skirt very nicely. It's a very classic um, bias cut skirt in um, two options, a midi length or a just below the knee length. Um, just want to mention now as well, there was quite a lot of McCall's patterns I found for this episode. And at time of recording, at the time of the release, that our McCall's pattern sale is still on. So all our McCall's patterns are still 50% off. The sale is going to end this week. So if you're watching this later, down the line it might not still be the case but if you're quick and you're watching now and jump on you'll get any of the McCall's patterns for half price so that was my choice for Georgie's skirt and then for the top I chose the Tatuti Fabrics Tavi top which is very similar sort of boxy design at the front sleeveless that gentle round neck um, but there is a bit of a twist with the Tavi top there's a button down um, feature on the back of it just for something a little bit different and I just thought it was a really lovely pretty summer top that I would like to show to you. Um, for the skirt, I chose this gorgeous Visco chalet fabric that um, has been super, super popular. I thought a bias cut skirt in this would look lovely. It's like an animal printy sort of background and then it's got a floral design over the top of it. It's really gorgeous, been very, very popular. Animal print or leopard print as we know is really big this summer again. I don't think it ever really goes away to be honest. It's one of my favorite prints, but um, yeah, that was my choice for that one. Then on to Janet. So Janet's um, chosen outfit by Karen Millen and put her own spin on it. Uh, quite interesting watching the dynamic between Janet and the judges because she likes to push the boundaries, she likes to do things her own way and she'll admit that and laugh about it. She's very laid back um, and it's interesting to see how Patrick and Esme are sort of dealing with that. It's, it's really funny like dynamic to watch I think. Um, but yeah, Janet made shorts that were fitted um, but loose around the thigh and, and sort of very loose sort of flowy fit around the thigh and I thought Vogue 2034 would be a good pattern to recreate that look. You've got the option for trousers in this pattern as well, um, but the shorts look like a similar sort of style to what Janet made. And then for the top, she made a wrap over tie at the side top. Um, and I've chosen Vogue 2020 for that, which is actually a loungewear pattern, but it has got a crossover tie um, wrap top and it's got trousers included and a robe included. But the top has got a long sleeve with a dramatic slit up it. But I did think you could easily swap that out for just a simple short sleeve like Janet made, or you could go for the extra glamour and extra drama of the sleeve with a slit. Um, and the fabric I chose, I thought the shorts would just look lovely, sewn up in this gorgeous royal blue uh, seven berry. I think it's a seven berry. Um, yeah, I think it might be a set. No, it's a dashwood. It's a dashwood. This be beautiful rayon fabric in this royal blue with the multicolored um, print on it. Very, very pretty. And I thought would work really well to make a nice pair of loose fitting shorts. Marcus was up um, with. Um, he made an outfit that he'd previously made for his wife. Um, and again, we've got some more McCall's patterns here. So all the McCall's patterns at the time of recording are half price. Um, he made a cropped bardo top with a ruffle, lovely sort of wide ruffle design on it. Um, and I chose McCall's 7757, sorry for that one. Um, so you've got the off the sleeve bardo ruffle crop top. You've also got an option for a crop top with a long sleeve. And then 
then you've got some lovely loose fitting trousers included in this pattern as well but obviously the the bardo top was what mark has made and then with it he made an asymmetric skirt with pleats across it so that was quite tricky to find but i did find um, a vogue pattern vogue 1850 which had sort of a widish waistband and pleats across the front and an asymmetric design so i thought that was kind of similar to what marcus made um, and the fabric i chose for marcus's designs i chose this gorgeous gorgeous multicolored paisley fabric which is a um, viscose it's silky soft it's absolutely beautiful i've just made a top in it which will be released on friday the video for that i think um, but i thought that bardo top and the loose fitting trousers would look awesome sewn up in this um, so that was my choice for that one and next up I've got Susie so Susie made a lovely skirt it was um, sort of between midi and maxi length I suppose it had panels down it beautiful fit and then she made a crop top to go with it that were tied at the back um, the pattern I chose to recreate something similar to Susie's was Vogue 1961 so I think the skirt looks bang on like the one that Susie made really flattering fit um, flared with the, those lovely panels down it and then there's also a pair of trousers included with this pattern and then a cropped bra top um, and the cro crop bra top doesn't have the tie at the back like Susie's did but you know it's a similar sort of cohort set theme and the fabric I chose to go with that one is this gorgeous uh, Pima cotton lawn fabric which is a really high quality cotton lawn um, and this is the actual fabric I made my true bias Roscoe blouse in that I mentioned earlier and I love it it's so gorgeous so vibrant perfect perfect for summer so that was that one and then next I Ailsa um, chose to make a pair of wide leg trousers that were really lovely and tailored they had pleats at the front welt pockets at the back high-waisted very now very on trend and the pattern I chose to recreate something similar was no me 2053 really want to make these trousers when this pattern came out I was really excited by it I really wanted to make the trousers haven't got round to it um, but yeah I thought that would be perfect to recreate something similar to what Elsa did and then she paired it with a simple scoop neck like knit fitted vest um, and I thought you could use the Ali Olsen killer tank to recreate something similar it hasn't got a scoop at the back it's a racer back at the back um, but it is um, you know a very similar sort of theme and I think this would just be a work wardrobe workhorse pattern I think it's the sort of thing that once you've made it once you could probably make it again and again and again quite quickly and I just find having those fitted tank tops in my wardrobe really useful all year round so I wear them in the summer but then I also use them for layering in the winter so yep yeah, that's the patterns I would use for Ailsa and for the trousers um, I chose this seven berry cotton twill fabric in this gorgeous periwinkle color it's like a purpley bluey hue absolutely gorgeous I thought that would work really well for those and then I also thought that would work well for Pasha's outfit because she also chose to make some high-waisted um, tailored wide leg trousers but hers had a very nautical theme with a panel at the front with buttons and buttonholes that opened um, and I thought you could use that fabric and make no me 2043 which fits the bill perfectly got those definite wide leg nautical themed trousers and then she made a top out of scuba so again a very fitted knit top um, I think it was like a halter neck that crossed over and had a little bit of a keyhole opening we don't have anything exactly the same but we do have the named pattern Cisco dress and top pattern um, which is for knit fabrics again it's got a keyhole in it but then it wraps over across at the front and ties at the back so a really nice feature and I thought just along a similar theme to the top that Pasha made and then next on to Luke so Luke decided to make a lovely casual um, shirt in broderie anglais we've got some gorgeous broderie anglais fabric I'm looking at it now but it's not on the website yet which is frustrating um, but yeah that was really lovely and then they 
paired that with um, some linen trousers that had a fly front zip, but again, were sort of like a relatively casual looking pair of trousers. So to recreate a similar look, I thought you could use McCall's 8486 for the shirt pattern. Um, it had the same sort of style collar as um, Luke's shirt did. Um, it's got pockets included, so you could put a pocket on like Luke did if you wanted to, and it's buttoned down at the front. Again, half price currently in the sale, but if you're watching this later, that, that sale may have ended. And then another McCall's pattern for the trousers, 7987. Um, there's shorts included in this as well, but it's like a classic chino trouser shorts pattern, um, relatively sort of casual and relaxed looking and got the fly front zip. And I thought um, Luke used linen um, to create their trousers. So I thought I would use our linen cotton fabric in this sandy lemony color. I thought it would look quite nice for trousers with the white top, but we do do this in a range of colors. It's been really, really popular. I've made a few things from it and it's just great for summer. And then on to uh, Lauren, so Lauren, um, I really like Lauren's style actually. She's quite sort of, I think she chooses some quite unusual designs and she really goes for it. I think she's got a real sense of like individual style, which I really like. And she made some trousers and I think this might be the actual pattern that she made. They had like a really wide sort of uh, cummerbund and then they had gathered trouser legs, like really super wide gathered trouser legs that fed into that cummerbund. And McCall's 829 Two, I think might be the actual pattern that Lauren used and then another McCall's pattern um, for the top she made um, like a knit sort of very fitted um, top to go with them and I thought that McCall's 8368 was along a similar theme it's a knit top it crosses over at the front um, it's got thin straps I thought you could make that to go with it and for the trousers I just keep coming back to this glorious glorious visco twill fabric that we've got in I've had to reorder it. it's been really popular beautiful drape and movement and just perfect for wide leg floaty trousers for summer really love that fabric and then finally, on to Don. So Don, you know, we can't ever find Don's patterns because he does love to draft a pattern, which, you know, kudos to you, Don. Um, and he'd actually been quite sort of innovative. I think he's a scientist by trade originally. He'd been quite innovative and developed a pattern that didn't require a side seam. And apparently he makes them quite regularly for his wife. So um, yeah, all very impress impressive. Um, I thought you could use New Look 6289 to make something similar. They're just a nice loose fitting wide leg trouser um, and then he made a simple sort of shell top really to go with them um, and I chose Butterick 6948. Um, Don's shell top I think had princess seams, I struggled to find one with princess seams but Butterick 6948 has got a, a top that's a similar sort of style to the one Don made, um, a curved neck, sleeveless um, and then it also includes a simple shift dress, um, a wrap dress with like a trench coaty wrap dress style and a little sort of trench coat jacket design as well. So quite a lot included in that pattern. And the fabric I chose for the loose fitting trousers, and I really want to get around to making some of these myself, is this gorgeous tile print fabric that we've got that is just screaming out to be made into a nice pair of loose fitting wide leg trousers for summer. That's my plan for it. If I get round to it, I hope I do. I've got a list as long as your arm of all the things I want to make at the moment and zero time to do it. So yeah, that's my conundrum. But hopefully I've given you lots of inspiration today about what you could make to sew along with the bees. Everything is linked below, as I said at the start of the video. And if you like what you see today, please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.